channel and welcome to a slightly different video. This is going to be um, all about my puppy Maple and how I have found training her and just a few little like tips and tricks that I've picked up and I'm just basically going to be answering all your questions because I did speak in a vlog a little while ago about making a video like this but um, I didn't think that many people would be interested because it's a little bit niche it's different to my usual sort of fashion styling content um but you guys seem to want it and um i get a few messages um when i post pictures of maple and stuff on um, how i found training and a few people have asked me for some tips so this video will probably just be for those 10 people that i've spoken to about this but um, I thought that I would just put it together in a little video anyway and maybe it might help you guys or answer some of the questions that you've had. So as you can see I've got Miss Maple here on my lap. Now she is looking so much bigger than the last time that she was on the camera. I can't remember when that was. Um, but yeah she's grown so much. She's six months now so we're thinking that she's probably fully grown and um, she hasn't grown really in the last month or so so maybe this is it now she is in desperate need of a haircut um we have her booked in for next week or the weekend after i can't remember um but all of a sudden your hair just grew didn't it darling so she's booked in at the groomers but you'll have to excuse her crazy hair so i have some questions here on my phone i asked you guys on my stories if there's anything that you wanted to know so let me pull them up. So the most asked question um, whenever I post a picture or anything of Maple is what dog is she? What breed is she? And she is a toy cockapoo. So her mum was a cocker spaniel and her dad was a toy poodle. I think they are adorable dogs, cockapoos. You guys will probably know I did have um, a cockapoo before Maple called Bella and I love, she was my best friend in the whole wide world. And they're just such kind, caring, sensitive dogs but they're also absolutely mad as well the reason that we actually went for a cockapoo in the first place is because um both my mum and my dad i think used to have kind of a little bit of an allergic reaction to dogs and dog hair um and they're both kind of asthmatic and get very wheezy very easily so we were looking for a hypoallergenic dog and a girl that i actually went to school with um had a litter of cockapoos and um, we went to see them and you will know if you've ever visited a litter of puppies um, that once you go and visit you do not leave without one or without buying one. It was very hard to go and see however many little cockapoo puppies and then just say no. So I knew if I took my mum and dad to see them then that would convince them and it did. Um, so maple is this lovely maple syrup colour. Um, it's actually called fox red I think and it's a bit different to uh, the cockapoo that we had before. Bella she was a champagne colour so she was very blonde and obviously maple is very ginger but it's quite nice to have a little someone a little bit different isn't it one thing i will say though is i did get a question um someone asked what kind of dog uh, maple was because they said they've been looking for a dog that looks like that and while they are adorable and they look so cute um they are hard work um both poodles and spaniels are obviously really kind of like hyperactive dogs um, and when you put that together you get a crazy dog so it's just something to bear in mind to do a bit of research on their temperament and that sort of thing because they're not just going to be a cute dog that will just sit still and be timid and shy and not do anything and they are hard work and um they're hard to train as well so it's just very important obviously you guys aren't stupid you know what you're doing but i just obviously want to reiterate that it is super important to just do your research and make sure the breed that you're getting is the right breed for you um, because there is nothing worse than getting a dog that you just can't handle or that doesn't fit with your lifestyle. So obviously I'm very lucky I work from home so I was here, I am here all day every day with Maple um, and I was able to train her and look after her and settle her in. My mum was also off work because we got her during the Christmas holidays so my mum was here as well. There was two weeks of the two of us here all the time it was locked down so we weren't going out anywhere so really she had such a great start in this home and so another question that i have been asked before um is do i have the details for maple's breeder and um i wouldn't really give out other people's details anyway but um 
there was only one litter and obviously they've all gone and um, there was no plans for a second litter so there would be no point in me sharing her details anyway but again obviously like I said you guys aren't stupid but I just want to um say as well how important it is to research the breeder we were very lucky the first time around because like I said I went to school with the girl who um had the litter for Bella but obviously this time around it wasn't that easy and we were looking online for a breeder and there are just so many scams out there it's so sad to see but there are a lot of people that um unfortunately just want your money and these dogs are so expensive i'm not going to mention the price but you just have to do a bit of research and you can see how much these dogs cost um so there is so much money to be made in this business and unfortunately there are some people that do scam you so it's just so important especially at the moment i mean restrictions are easing now so you should be able to go and visit and go and see the puppy for yourself um even then obviously there's not a hundred percent guarantee but obviously we weren't able to do that so we just made sure we had lots of facetime and video calls with the breeder and she sent over all the relevant certificates and everything from mum and dad to make sure that they were all healthy and had the checks that they need and were kennel club certified and all that jazz you can just google all the things you would need from a breeder um we actually found our breeder on pets for homes i think the website's called i can't remember there are a lot of breeders on there so it was difficult to sift through but it was just sort of the quickest way for us to find a good one but yeah just keep your wits about you it can be so difficult when you see such a cute puppy and that is all your mind is focused on um but yeah it's just important to watch out for that sort of stuff make sure if you can't go and visit that you have those facetime calls anything suspicious and just avoid at all costs also if you are paying a deposit then make sure you get a receipt for that deposit and if you can do it through a website like pets for homes i think i think that's what the website's called i can't remember um but they do have an option where you can pay the deposit through their website so everything is safe but anyway i just wanted to sort of get that out of the way and just to make those couple of points before we got on to the um proper questions I feel like I've really dilly dallied here. If you're here for doggy content, then there you go. Um, the first question is how often do you have to have their fur trimmed? Now, as I said, Maple has not had her first puppy groom yet. Um, so her hair is very long at the moment. But with our old dog, Bella, God, she was a nightmare at the groomers. Um, so we're hoping that Maple's not going to be the same. But we used to have her hair cut probably about every three months. As soon as her fur started to grow kind of over her eyes and over her claws, um, then we would just cut it. So yeah, about every three months, I think. I think that's sort of what's recommended as well, every three months. Yes. Yes. Somebody else asked toilet training tips, please. So... Toilet training is hard, I won't lie. We didn't take Maple outside until she had her 10 week injection. So for the first two weeks she was inside using puppy pads. That was just because we didn't want to risk her going out into the garden um, before she'd been fully vaccinated. We were very lucky that our breeder had already puppy pad trained her so that was great there were very few accidents in those first two weeks and she was really good on the puppy pads then of course once they can go outside it's a whole different kettle of fish we were feeling really confident with how she was using the pads and then trying to get her to go outside it was difficult I'd say for the first week I was literally like I said to my mum I was like I don't know how I'm going to do this like I was having to take her out every half an hour pretty much to avoid any sort of accident inside and then I realized I can't do that I can't avoid the accidents the accidents are going to happen um, and I know some people view that differently and they think that you shouldn't let your dog go in the house because then once they go in the house it's very hard to stop them going in the house and I do understand that um, I take a little bit more of a relaxed approach not to say that she is going to the toilet in the house all the time because she's not now I was just sort of of the view that if it takes a little bit longer it takes a little bit longer so yeah for the first week pretty much I was trying to take her outside every half an hour it didn't work obviously with my schedule either there was no way I was catching every single wee I would take her out stand outside with her in the freezing cold for half an hour bring her in and then she'd just wee inside <laughs> so it wasn't going well we just sort of set a routine in place I got to know then when she would need the toilet and she was kind of needing the toilet at the same times each day so she goes out now in the morning first thing she wakes up at about eight o'clock and i take her out for her walk then 
um, so she goes to the toilet then and now she can hold it for about four hours after that so then she'll go out to the toilet at 12 o'clock so we're pretty much accident free now in the house she does get excited and excited wees do happen when people come into the house. And we now have our puppy pad um, right at the back door. It doesn't go down very often. She doesn't need it during the day. It's just in the evening sometimes. Um, she forgets to ask to go out. Um, so the puppy pad is right by the back door so that she knows that that is sort of the pathway that she takes to go to the toilet. When we go outside, we go to the same area and we just stand there and I will just go wee wee and she knows wee wee and that's what i would do obviously at the beginning she didn't understand what wee wee was so um when she started going i would just say wee 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 over and over again i hope she's not gonna wee wee now <laughs> over and over again whilst she was doing it and then she kind of got used to that noise meant that action and then as soon as she'd done it um i would bring her straight back in so she knows she's going to that specific part of the garden and she knows that it's not playtime because we do a lot of playing in the garden um so i didn't want her to get confused and think oh it's playtime let me go and get my ball and run around and have zoomies outside no it's just wee wee inside nice and calm and quick so yeah those are my tips for toilet training what is maple good slash not good at now that she's a little bit older she's really good at sit and wait really good you can make her wait for her food for ages she will just sit there and not move not struggling but she's still a bit of a biter sometimes so she gets in this like crazy mood after she's had a zoomy or mid zoomy and she just gets carried away I think with the playing and she just nips at you a little bit she is really starting to understand that no now means just stop whatever you're doing and just sit down so every time I say no in like a quite a stern voice she just sits and just waits for another command which is quite good the toilet training is going really well so she's good at that she's good at walking um but she's not so good at um recall <sighs> little yeah we're having a little bit of trouble with that just because she gets so carried away um when she's in the garden and she just is sniffing and picking up things and in her own little world so um so that is something that we do need to work on but i think a lot of people underestimate how quickly they pick things up um just speaking from my experience with cockapoos it was literally how long did we do it for probably about two sessions of um half an hour training getting her to sit and she'd picked it up straight away and that's all it took was literally like two afternoons of me just sitting with her for half an hour and yeah she got sit straight away and we also made her wait for her food as well since she came here so that she always knew what weight was and she's really good at that always waits for food and treats and stuff so yeah very pleased with that aspect of discipline someone said did you go to dog school and if yes would you recommend it or did you train on your own um so no we didn't do like a dog school or a puppy class or anything like that um i did to be honest i never really thought of it i never thought that that would be something that we would need maybe i would have if this was my first dog um but she just like i said she picks things up so quickly i just didn't feel the need um and i knew that i was going to be here all the time to persevere and train her myself so i knew that i would have that time to do it uh, maybe if you don't have the time then it could be a good way to sort of get thing get the ball rolling a bit quicker But no, we didn't feel the need to um, do puppy class or anything like that. Did you get health or other insurances? Yes, we do have pet insurance for her um, It's just with pet plan and um, I'm not sure which one it is. I will have to um, Have a look but we didn't get pet insurance for my last dog and she did have a lot of complications with her health um and yeah by the time that we thought about getting insurance it was kind of too late and she was already diagnosed with all these issues originally my plan was not to get pet insurance and to just pay um what i would have paid pet insurance into um like a separate fund for maple every month um so i would have that um to fall back on um, if there were emergencies. But I just thought that pet insurance is just the best way to go. Um, we did get sort of a higher tier, I think, so that it covers a lot more things. But cockapoos do have health problems, unfortunately, and um, like a lot of dogs, 
sometimes things do go wrong and I would hate um, money to be a factor in um, her not being able to get what she needed. So yes, we do have pet insurance. And somebody else has asked, how have you found training, recall, and off the lead walking? So I did touch on this a little bit, but um, off the lead walking, we've not tried properly yet, just because I don't think she's ready and I don't think it's worth the risk. Um, she just, there are some times when she's really, really good and she's really pays attention and she's really engaged, but there are the odd times where she just is in her own little world. She won't come back to me. Um, this is just in the garden and I just can't get her attention and she runs away. And if I was in like an open field, I would just be so paranoid that um, that would happen. So we do have an extendable lead. So that is sort of going to be the next step um, to get her to go out a bit further away from me, but also keep her secure as well. Her recall in the house is very good. Um, if I ask her to come to me or if I get her to follow me, her recall in the side in the house is very good. But as soon as we get out into the garden, into a, like a wider open space, there's just so many more distractions and she just wants to sniff around. So, so that is definitely something that we need to work on. And the final question that I'm going to answer, because I feel like I've rambled on so much, is about um, crate training. Uh, so someone said, did we crate train Maple? And yes, we did. Um, and I feel like it was the best decision that we made. I'm going to put you down because you're a fidget bum. Um, yes, we did crate train Maple and I really feel like it's helped so much. We got that crate up, so it was up, ready for her when she came back. We put her food next to it, we put her blanket in there and she literally loves her crate now. It's like her bedroom. Um, we've never had any problems with her going in it at all. She's never tried to not go when I put her in. Um, but I feel like because from day one, we said, no, you are going in there. That is your bedroom. That's where you sleep. Um, I feel like she's just completely used to it. A couple of tips that I have if you're struggling with crate training, um, apart from start it off for day one. If you're past that, then um, get a cover for your crate uh, because she has a cover over her so she can't see anything um, and it's like completely dark in there. So that really, really helps to settle her. Second one is um, play games in and around the crate. That's what I did the first few weeks of her being here. And um, we had treats in and out of the crate. Um, she sometimes ate her food in the crate or next to the crate. So it was sort of like a happy place for her um, so with like happy things like her food, her treats, playing was all centered around the crate. So it wasn't like this scary thing in the utility room that no one ever went near and she just went in there to sleep and be on her own. Also move the crate around, have your dog in the crate with you when you're upstairs in your bedroom or when you're in the lounge. We had her with us, but she was in her crate and we were sat on the sofa. So she was used to sort of us being there while she was in the crate. So now during the day, like if I'm doing something, I know that I can just pop her in her crate for an hour and she'll go to sleep and she'll be absolutely fine and I can get on and do what I'm doing and she can hear me and she'll be okay. One final tip that I have is don't stress too much about routine. Um, just personally, from my experience, I know a lot of dogs love routine and it really helps structure their day and helps with training. But for Maple, it kind of would have been a little bit more of a hindrance, I think, than a help. Um, she has her routine, she gets up at the same time every weekday and a similar time every weekend, but we don't put too much emphasis on the routine so that if the routine goes out of whack a little bit, it's not the end of the world for her because I know, like for instance, when the clocks changed, um, a lot of puppies, people were saying, oh, my dog went, was so confused by the clocks, didn't bother Maple at all because she's used to, maybe she'll go to bed a bit later on this day or maybe she'll wake up a bit later or a bit early or whatever. She's used to the changes. Um, so it's not a huge scare for her when things are different. She's so well behaved in the evenings. Um, she literally sleeps from about 10, half 10, we put her in at night and she sleeps till eight o'clock in the morning not a murmur and she's done that from literally the third night the first two nights there was probably about 45 minutes of crying and then she settled and since then she's settled every single night no problem which is just amazing and i feel so lucky because people are always saying oh she's keeping you up at night no she's not at all she's 
brilliant because um, I was expecting to lose a lot of sleep but I haven't at all so uh, if you're having problems in the evening I'm afraid I can't help with that another tip that I have it's not really a tip just more of like a recommendation is take pictures because they grow so fast you will literally wake up one morning and there'll be a fully grown dog and you'll think oh my god why didn't I take more pictures of them when they were a puppy and they were a baby and when I first brought them home so I literally try and take a picture of Maple every single day so that I've got that memory and I've got lots of pictures of her to look back on when she's this small size because she will be fully grown for the rest of her life but that changing period when she's a puppy is just so nice to look back on and say oh my god she was that small and she did this funny thing and whatever um, because that's one thing that I really regret about my last dog we have hardly any pictures of her when she was a puppy um, obviously it was a very long time ago so like phones and cameras and stuff of, of such poor quality but I would just love to have looked back on some pictures of her being a little baby and um, I'm so glad that I've done that with Maple now and I've got loads and loads of pictures of her. Right I think that's enough I've rambled on quite a bit today so sorry about that um, I hope this video was helpful for you guys if you do have any other questions just leave them below um, I'm not a dog trainer I am not experienced in training dogs at all this is just how um, me and Maple like to do things and she seems quite happy and healthy with it so I'm basically just sort of sharing my experience but thank you guys so much for watching I really hope you enjoyed this video and enjoyed seeing Maple I promise she is going to have a haircut soon if you did like this video then please give it a thumbs up and if you are new to my channel I would love it if you subscribed and we will see you when will we see you next week with another video bye